good day everyone we will discuss about an issue when joining a database to availability group fails we will discuss about the reason why the join fails on an always on availability group and also the solution for this issue let's get started i'll be uh, trying to create an ag called uh, jbs ag which will basically contain a uh, database called uh, jbs wiki JBS AG1 and JBS AG2, which are on the primary region, will be uh, configured using uh, synchronous commit availability mode. And JBS AG3 will act as an uh, asynchronous replica. We will try to uh, set up an always on availability group using this um, uh, setup and then uh, see how is it going. I will be uh, utilizing JBS AG1 as the primary replica. So what I'll do is like, I will try creating uh, the availability group on JBS AG1 uh, database instance. Let's uh, create the always on availability group called JBS AG and uh, add the database JBS wiki into it. Click on next. Then I will select JBS Wiki database, which is 80 MB. And then let's add the other two replicas, JBS AG2 and JBS AG3. So once this is added, what we'll do is like we'll make the availability mode to synchronous for JBS AG1 and JBS AG2. And we will uh, leave uh, JBS AG3 as an asynchronous commit availability mode. So the endpoints is uh, going to be default. Everything else is going to be default. I'm not going to create a listener right now. So I'm going to leave as it is. Let's click on next. Automatic seeding should be fine for us. Let's wait for um, the validation to complete here. Yeah? So everything is okay. This is fine because I've not selected uh, creating any listener. So if you see here, we are basically adding JBS Wiki database and uh, JBS AG1 is the primary. So let's go ahead and click on finish. So it is started. It's creating the uh, uh, always on health extended event session on JBS AG3. Let's wait for um, uh, this to complete and then uh, uh, we'll see if this is going to complete or fail. Okay, it is uh, trying to create the availability group. It is done. So if you see here, uh, the wizard is uh, completed successfully and we have set up the availability group JBSAG. So let's refresh the primary replica and let's look at the uh, availability group. So if you see here, the database JBS wiki is synchronized. We see in um, um, fail state in JBS AG2. So let's uh, open the dashboard. And then if you see here, um, JBS AG2, we are not able to uh, uh, see it in green. It is basically in failed state. And also it is basically telling like the JBS wiki database on JBS AG2 is uh, not synchronizing. So what we'll do, we'll go to JBS AG2 and then let's refresh that and then look at the database. So if we see here, we don't see the database at all. Uh, uh, the database JBS wiki is not at all there. And then if you look at the availability group, we are able to see JBS AG availability group. We have a warning symbol for JBS wiki. So, and we don't see the database. Let's see what is happening on JBS AG3. It's currently refreshing. So if we look at uh, the availability group there, what I'm able to see is like, uh, we are um, able to see the availability group. Uh, let's look at the database. Okay, it is green, yeah, and uh, the database here seems to be all right. JBS Wiki is synchronizing because they synchronous, but JBS AG2, it basically, uh, what I'm seeing is like, uh, it is failed and we haven't warning. So let's look at the warnings. 
So the warning is basically telling like the data synchronization state of this availability database is unhealthy. On an is okay, this is a generic error, and uh, it is basically telling like the secondary database is not joined to the availability group. That's the message that we are seeing. So what we'll do now, we will try joining it and see what happens. Let's uh, click on close here and then go to JBS AG2. Let's refresh it. And then what we'll do is like we'll try joining it and then see if you're getting an error or it works. Join to availability group. And then let's click on OK. Let's look at the results here. Not sure it's going to take some time. Yeah, let's wait for like a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and once I uh, get a result, either it completes or fails, I will resume the video back. Okay, the join database basically failed and what I'm seeing is like we, are, um, we have an error here. It basically tells like the JBS uh, wiki database does not exist. That's the error we are seeing here. So now what we'll do is like we'll execute some uh, DMVs, and then uh, see like um, yeah, and then uh, see like what are the errors, and also like we'll check at uh, the SQL Server error log. Yeah. So let's first go to uh, the primary replica, which is JBS AG1. So let's execute this query, which basically joins our uh, DMV sys.dmhadr availability replica states and sys.availability uh, underscore replicas. And then let's look at um, uh, the error description. Okay, if we see here, what I'm seeing is like uh, JBS AG1 and JBS AG3 seems to be all right. It is just uh, JBS AG2 that basically has an uh, um, issue. Yep. And then if I look at this message here, uh, what I'm seeing is like I'm uh, seeing the connection attempt failed with error 10060. A connection attempt failed because the connected party did not re properly respond after a period of time. It's basically a kind of an, uh, a connection issue. Um, uh, that's uh, it, it is basically the primary replica is not able to make a connection to JBS AG2. But what we can see here is like we are able to connect to JBS AG2 without any issue. So that rules out that uh, it's a uh, problem connecting to the instance. Like uh, you can rule out uh, things like host file and uh, uh, things like that. And also a wrong entry in the host file. Those things can be ignored because we are able to connect to JBS AG2 from JBS AG1. The next thing that comes to our mind is like to uh, look at the SQL server error log. So let's look at the SQL server error log on JBS AG1, then see what messages we have in uh, error log. Yep. So if you see here, um, automatic seeding in an availability group failed with a transient error. So that's this is one message that we are seeing. So it tells like uh, uh, automatic seeding of availability database JBS wiki in availability group failed with an transient error. Operation will be retired. That is one message that we are able to see. So this message we are seeing it uh, again and again. Seeding is cancelled. One zero a check if seeding needed. Uh, Transient error. What else? It's the same message that we are seeing. So what we'll do is like uh, we will check for other messages as well. We will fail with the transient error. Okay, always an ability group connection at secondary database established on database on JBS AG3. But so here what I'm seeing is like a connection timeout has occurred while attempting to establish a connection to Availability replica JBS AG2 with ID 
Okay, so we are seeing this message that uh, it is either a networking or firewall issue. And then if you look at the message that we have on the DMV, that basically tells like um, a connection attempt failed and basically kind of shows like it's a uh, connection issue. So let's uh, log into JBS AG2 and then see what messages we have there. In the SQL server error log. SP underscore read error log. So it basically tells a state of availability replica in availability group AG change from not available to resolving normal and then resolving normal to secondary. So again, it, it, we see the same error. A connection timeout has occurred while attempting to establish a connection. JBS AG1. It's not able to make a connection to the primary replica. That is what we are saying. So one thing is very clear, like there seems to be an um, uh, issue where communication between JBS AG1 to AG2 and AG2 to AG1 is having some issue. So we have ruled out it's not a um, 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 networking issue because uh, at least we are able to connect to um, uh, the replica JBS AG2 to, from JBS AG1. So now what we'll do is like, we will try pinging it. I'm sure this will work, but we will just look at it once. So if you are, if you can see, it is properly resolving to the IP address and it is also pinging JBS AG2. Next thing that we need to check is to uh, uh, see if uh, port 5022 is open, because if you look at the always on properties, yeah, we know that uh, the endpoint basically uses your uh, uh, port 5022. So what you'll do is like first we will check for um, uh, JBS uh, AG2. First we'll check for JBS AG3 because uh, we know that uh, everything seems good as far as JBS AG3 is concerned. So let's try that in JBS AG3. And if you see here, we are able to connect to it without any issues. Yep. So now what we'll do is like we will try the same thing for um, um, JBS AG2 as well, where we have this problem. Yeah, 5022. Uh, it should have connected by now. Um, it seems like uh, there might be a problem related to port 5022. Let's wait for it to either complete or fail, and then we will check on this further. So it is still trying to connect to that port uh, 5022. So if you see here, is not able to um, open a connection to uh, JBS AG2 on port 5022. So now what we'll do is like, let's venture into JBS AG2 and then uh, open the firewall and then um, uh, whitelist this port 5022. Uh, this is a lab machine, so I'm uh, going ahead and uh, doing it here. But uh, as far as um, production server is concerned, we will have a separate team for uh, whitelisting the required ports. So you will have to reach out to that particular team and then check if this uh, port is open. And here uh, we have something called AON underscore ports, which basically implies always on. I was the one who created it, so I know that. So here I'm going to add 5022. And then on the outbound ports as well, I'm going to add uh, port 5022. Comma 5022. Now what I'll do is like after adding it, let me ensure we have this. We have 5022. Five zero two two is here. So what I'll do, I will go back to JBS AG1 primary replica, and then I will try a connection this time. And if you're, if you can see, we are able to make a connection properly. So now what I'm going to do, let's let's refresh it here. And then if you see here that uh, um, cross mark is gone. Now it is uh, all good here. So now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to check refresh JBS AG2 and then check the databases. And what I'm seeing here is like JBS Wiki database is synchronized. So the problem here is like 5022 was not open as far as uh, JBS AG2 server is concerned. And as soon as I opened it in JBS AG2, all the databases uh, 
sorry, uh, the database JBS wiki that was added to always on availability group seems to be uh, um, looking good. Like I don't see any more uh, cross symbols. It is all green and uh, the synchronization state is synchronized as far as JBS AG1, AG2 and as far as JBS AG3 is concerned, it is synchronizing. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.